Israel continues strikes on Gaza's southern city of Rafah, near the border with Egypt, where more than a million Palestinians, some displaced multiple times by the war, seek safety. Their fate was discussed by diplomats in New York, where on Tuesday the United States again vetoed an Arab-backed UN resolution demanding an immediate ceasefire in Gaza. It's the third U.S. veto since Israel's military offensive on the Palestinian enclave that followed Hamas' October 7th attack on southern Israel. Palestinian U.N. envoy Riyad Mansour called the move reckless and dangerous. Shielding Israel even as it commits the most shocking crimes while exposing millions of innocent Palestinian civilians to its wrath and more untold horrors. It is not Israel that should be protected by the veto. It is Palestinian children, women, and men who must be protected by this council acting now. The U.S. proposed its own draft resolution that calls for a temporary ceasefire in Gaza up to six weeks, only after a hostage deal between Israel and Hamas is secured. The U.S. is pushing for the deal with Egypt and Qatar. It also condemns the October 7th attack and makes clear that Hamas has no place in future governance of Gaza. In addition, our draft states there can be no reduction of territory in the Gaza Strip and rejects, as we have before in Resolution 2720, any forced displacements of civilians in Gaza. It also highlights the concerns many council members have regarding the fate of civilians in Rafah, making clear that under current circumstances, a major ground offensive into Rafah should not proceed. Skeptics see the U.S. resolution as a diplomatic ploy that would prolong Palestinian suffering. Israel has warned that unless the hostages held by Hamas are freed by the start of Ramadan on March 10th, it will push on with a ground offensive in Rafah. Every day there are threats and statements. We don't know where to go. However, the U.S. resolution does show Washington's hardening stance on Israel's conduct of the war. This is the first time that the U.S. has proposed a text which really does include some fairly strong, implicit criticism of Israel's campaign in Gaza and the situation in the West Bank. And I think that the Biden administration may be sending a subtle sign that it will continue to protect Israel at the UN, but its patience is not limitless. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has vowed not to bow to international pressure. This week, his war cabinet is meeting President Joe Biden's top advisor, Brett McGurk, who will push Israel to agree on the hostage deal and hold off from a ground campaign in Rafah. Pat Siwida, Huswara, Viewing News.